Hello there, the internet. I hope that you're all well. Thank you very much for stopping by. I have another consumer review for you today. A couple of years ago, I tested this for Amazon, the Arlo Pro 4. It's a uh, IP-based security camera. And um, when I reviewed it, uh, I was quite complimentary about the quality of the camera. Uh, it really is genuinely a very, very good camera. But there are a few other things about it I wasn't so keen on. Um, there is no onboard um, memory for it, so there's no removable uh, SD cards or anything like that. So you could either only watch it live, not very good for a security camera, or if you wanted to review the footage, you needed to subscribe to Arlo's cloud-based uh, subscription service. If you had just one camera, that was about £2 a month, something like that, or you could have multiple cameras for six, seven pound a month. But that could get quite expensive over the uh, over a number of cameras if you wanted a multi-camera setup. Um, so very, very good camera, but not so good with the accessories. I've had it for two years with the subscription, and I've been using it more as a, a wildlife camera as much as anything, because uh, while the app has a few failings, what it was very good at was uh, differentiating between uh, random movements, people, and animals. So if I got a particular, say say a fox or a cat or a hedgehog wandered through, it would um, give me an alert and tell me that it was a wildlife, so you don't have to scroll through hundreds and hundreds of re recordings. It will say, this is a wildlife, this is, oh, actually look at that, and you see a fox running through the garden or something. It was really, really quite good. Um, but as a security camera, it was perhaps very, very expensive. I've got a number of security cameras dotted around the house from Swan, TP-Link and various other suppliers. And um, while the camera itself is very, very good, I didn't think the ecosystem was particularly good to justify me buying any more of them. But run on two years and uh, Arlo have presented us with a... Uh, Version 5, the Arlo Pro 5. Amazon sent it through for me to uh, test. And um, I'm going to open it up in a moment and uh, spend the next couple of weeks uh, giving it a bit of a test and um, see what improvements there are over that. Um, I'm a bit sceptical, though, if there's actually going to be, be many improvements over that because uh, I've been looking through the, uh, the blurb between them and I can't see a great deal. Um, you put them side by side... Apparently, this has got an eight-month battery. That has a six-month battery. I'll tell you now, that was never a six-month battery. I'd have to charge that up every, say, two months, which isn't too bad for a, for a uh, camera-based uh, system, but definitely not six months. So maybe we'll get three months out of that, maybe. What else? Uh, both of these are 2K. You'd have thought two years down the line we might be uh, going into uh, 4K or something like that, 5 megapixels or something like that. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's 2K. So the internals are, they look pretty this, pretty much the same. The only thing that really stands out as being any different with this one to that one is that this one now supports 5G um, connections. Most security cameras only like 2.4. So with your wireless router, you have to make sure it's either set up specifically for 2.4 or hope that the camera can differentiate differentiate between the two of them. Um, not many security cameras use 5 gigahertz for various reasons. It, obviously you get a um, bigger data throughput but it's got a shorter range and um, more susceptible to interference from things. So if you've got a camera outside and your router's inside, generally 2.4 gigahertz is perfectly fine and uh, you're not really sending a huge amount of data live like I'm sending information with this uh, camera at the moment, which is a 4k camera, that's sending a lot of data but with a camera like that, you're not really sending that much data on demand like that. It's not really that necessary. So we'll see what it's like in operation. But let's uh, let's open it up. I've not opened it. I've, I've had it a few days now, and I've not actually opened it up yet. I mean, uh, rather busy with work. But um, let's have a look. See what's in here. Okay, there's our camera in there, which looks suspiciously <laughs> very very similar to. Uh, to the old one. Um, okay, right. We've got a what's that? Oh, that's the battery that goes goes inside. Uh, there's the, oh, hang on a second. Oh, hang on, hang on a second. One of the things I was extremely complimentary about that was the mount for it. It had. Is that right? Oh, what's going on there? It had a um, or has a magnetic mount which mounts to the back of that. You just snap it on basically and it was brilliant you could move it all over the place i'll be very really upset if that's not got that in here all right so we've got that's the that's the charging cable that will connect magnetically to the bottom of there let's have a look let's have a look i'm not sure it's gone 
wow, that is, I'll tell you what, that is a major disappointment. If you look at my old review, I thought that was the best bit about it, this magnetic mount, which you could is a ball mount. So you put it there and move it around like that and it will sit magnetically. And that's, I mean, that's, you, you can see I've taken this off to bring it up here. It's mounted on a tree out in the garden. And uh, that was that was brilliant. If we haven't got that now, the only thing it's got is this, you have to screw it onto that. I don't like that at all. If that is the case, that is not good. I don't like that at all. And there's some instructions in there. Fixings for that. Charging cable, battery for that. I don't like that at all, if that is the case. And it's a more expensive device, that is. Already we've got off on the wrong foot here. Let's see if I remember how to do this. It's been, uh, been two years since I've had to set this up. Right, so we've got lots of uh, silly cellophane all over the place. Sadly going to plastic landfill. I don't know why that was entirely necessary. Get this off of it. Okay, that's all off there. That's stuck to my finger. Right, so there is your camera. There are no memory ports for it. So we've got this. This is your charging cable. So it's a USB charging cable. That will attach bits of sticky plastic all over the place. That connects to there magnetically, like that. You get that charged up. Now, if I remember how do you do this, and you press the button. There you go, you press that button there, that pops out. Okay, so there's no memory card slot in there. Don't know why they don't do, well, I do know why they do that, because they want to want you to get a subscription service going, that's right. So that will then go in there, in there, and that goes in there, and Eventually, that oh, here we go. We've got blue light just to, just popped on there. There you go, and we should be able to connect that to our app, which I shall do shortly. I'll, I shall report back as to how uh, how well it connects. That one, I'm not kidding. It took took two days of me trying to get it to get it to work before it actually finally connected. All right, I'm going to go away and well, I was going to mount that onto the same mount that uh, that one's on. Well, I, actually, I can if that's still magnetised, I can still use the same mount that's out there. But you won't be able to do that. You'll have to use use that that. Not happy with that. that. That really has ticked me off. That is all out wrong, wrong. Right, I'm going to go and set this up. Uh, I'll have it running for a, for a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. See how it gets on with the battery. See if there's any discernible difference in quality between that, which I really don't expect there's going to be, and see if there's any real justification for buying that over that one. Right. Okay. I shall report back shortly. Don't go anywhere. Okay, it's been a couple of weeks now. I've had the Pro 5 installed out in the garden and I uh, can't say I've been massively impressed. It's virtually identical to the Pro 4 that I had before it. If I didn't have the Pro 4, I would have perhaps thought, yeah, this is a great camera, but putting it side by side against a camera that's two years old, I can't say I'm massively impressed. Um, after the previous video, I uh, set about getting the thing set up with the uh, Arlo Secure app. It should be relatively straightforward. It takes you through it on a step-by-step -step guide. Um, you have to inst you have to download it for iOS or for um, your Android phones or uh, tablets, but uh, it should be it's straightforward. You uh, offer the uh, the camera up to a QR code. It goes bingy bongy, and then it should connect to your network. I say should, it took half an hour of attempts to get it to actually finally connect. It's better than the Pro 4. That took me a couple of days and I was about ready to drop kick it over the next door neighbor's fence. But um, the 5, slightly better, but not brilliant. I found that it kept on uh, cutting out when it was in um, detection mode. You know, when you put it into uh, like Bluetooth detect mode and uh, it's waiting to connect into you know, discovery mode. Um, and uh, it kept on coming up with uh, various errors. Um, you have to make sure the blue light is still flashing, so you have to um, uh, take it out of its cowl and uh, press the button to uh, put it back into discovery mode. Uh, if you don't do that, it uh, drops out long before it's actually connected. It's not perfect, it gets there in the end. And this is the camera when it was first uh, installed. I put it on the same tree that the uh, previous one was on using the same camera mount that didn't come with this thing. That camera mount, by the way, uh, you can buy them separately for $29.99 for a pack of two. Not brilliant, because it should be in the box, Arlo. Um, now, this is the footage. I couldn't help but notice it was a bit juttery. The, um, the actual 
camera image was pretty good, but I, I, I watched it over and over again. And I thought there was a bit of juddery, so I put it side by side with the Pro 4. Uh, I put it onto the uh, picnic table out in the garden so you can see them side by side. The colour looks better on the Pro 5, it's like the HDR has been uh, put up to 11 or something, but I couldn't help but notice that it was juddering and it wasn't until I put it side by side on Adobe Premiere, which I'm editing this one with at the moment, that I could tell that there was a drop off in frame rate compared to the uh, Pro 4. The Pro 4 would do three frames for every one frame of the Pro 5, which I thought was a bit odd. And then I noticed something else. I watched a bit of footage of uh, us having a barbecue at the weekend and uh, barbecue front and centre. And uh, there's a bit of footage. I thought it's actually quite nice and smooth. This is it's all right. And then you'll see the colour changes there. The it goes. It's like it goes into HDR mode, and it wasn't before. And then it becomes a bit more juddery. And uh, when I again put it back onto Adobe Premiere, I noticed that uh, it was quite smooth without the HDR on and then suddenly it kicks in for no apparent reason and the juddering comes back in again and I counted the frames on uh, uh, Adobe Premiere and uh, for every 10 frames you would get four frames when it was in HDR mode or five frames when it wasn't in HDR mode so it was ever so slightly smoother without the HDR on. Very very odd but <sighs> while it's really really nice clear picture and um, saturated with colour it was losing frame which if you've got a CCTV camera ideally you want as many frames as possible so that you can identify the person who's climbed over your back fence to go and steal your son's motorbike or something. <sighs> a bit odd. When it comes to night vision, the Arlo Pro 5 is pretty decent actually. Uh, it's a little bit lighter than the Arlo Pro 4. You can see plenty of stuff in the uh, in the dark, and that's when it was purely dark in the garden. When it's uh, got a half light, say when we've got the garden lights on, you can see there that the Pro 4 couldn't sustain the uh, uh, colour vision um, into night as long as the uh, Pro 5 could. It just didn't have enough light to sustain it. So the Pro 5 could stay with colour until it was really, really dark, so that's quite impressive. Beyond that, what else are my thoughts? Well, cloud storage. I do have a bee in my bonnet that these things do not allow you to have onboard memory. You can't put your own SD or micro SD card in there. So you can either watch the footage live or if you want to record footage, and let's face it, if someone's going to uh, burgle your back garden, uh, it's not likely you're going to be watching the camera. So you're going to need to have, be able to uh, review the footage. And the only way you can do that is if you have a cloud storage with Arlo. And uh, now when I got the uh, Arlo Pro 4 a couple of years ago, uh, I think I had a 25% discount and it cost me just over £2 a month, which was not brilliant, but it was it was just about acceptable. And uh, then when that expired, it uh, went up to £2.79 a month. So we're starting to get less acceptable. Um, and then... A couple of weeks ago, at the uh, back end of April, I got an email from Arlo saying they're making improvements to their service and uh, it's a wonderful service, but we're going to have to put your uh, subscription charge up again. And it went up by 25% to £3.49. It also said that wouldn't kick in until June the 1st, so imagine my surprise when uh, it came out of my account on May the 1st. Thanks very much, Arlo, for that. And... Um, it's a lot of money and that's for a single camera. You can get a unlimited service, I think it is now. Uh, I think when I first got the cameras, um, it was limited to five or six cameras and it was something like 9.99 a month for the, uh, for the subscription. Um, it's now unlimited, but uh, you need to have bought three cameras before that starts becoming cost effective. So that's over 600 pounds worth of camera before it becomes cost effective to spend another 10 pound a month 120 pound a year to be able to review the footage and I don't think that's acceptable all of my other cameras and I've tested a lot of cameras for Amazon over the last couple of years whether they're the Swan the TP-Link Tapos uh, the uh, SV4C I think it's called um, there's the uh, Kodak camera systems I've tested at least five different ecosystems and all of them allow you to put your own uh, memory card in all of them and it brings the cost down okay you've got to uh, buy a memory card but a memory card you can get for 10 15 pounds so four or five months worth of subscription you've paid off the memory card and you can access it when you want and you're never gonna have to pay for it ever again i don't like that i really don't and that service as we've seen is only going to go up in price really really don't like that and when you spent 200 pound on a camera you think you're going to get that sort of kind of included maybe i don't know i don't like that at all what else well 
the the camera is very very durable as you can see from this footage here where uh, a couple of squirrels knocked it flying uh, and it kept on ticking straight after that and that was not long after i got the camera and then this happened when uh, i managed to kick the football at it and uh, launch it flying off the tree and that's happened quite a few times so it's built well it's rugged it's durable but is it worth a couple of hundred pounds you see I not long ago installed a uh, the TP-Link Tapo system. It's one that I, I bought, and I bought six cameras for a similar expenditure to one single camera of this. And the footage is just as good, if not better. And the whole ecosystem, the app, I'm, I'm looking at the app at the moment, actually. I'm looking at the uh, dog playing in the uh, garden with my wife. It's wonderful. The app works really, really well. And all six cameras I've got are live on screen all at once. Whereas with, with the um, Arlo Secure app, um, it's a lot clunkier. You've got to go into the app. You've, there's a four or five second delay between what you're seeing live and what's actually uh, uh, displaying on the screen. And um, it's just not as good. It really isn't good. You can you can tailor the camera as in the camera in the app to do pretty much what you want it to do. But it's nothing like as extensive as what the uh, TP Links uh, uh, the Tapo app is. It's far far better. I am far happy with the ecosystem of the Tapo TP-Link than I am with Arlo for a similar sort of expenditure for six cameras. I'm just not that impressed by the uh, the Arlo. I've had, I've had it now for two years, the Pro 4, and I've just been using it as the wildlife camera. I'm very reluctant to expand any further to get any more cameras. The only reason I've got two cameras now is because Amazon sent me them through to be testing them. 200 quid and more isn't so good. Now, if you put them side by side, the performance of them very very similar so at rrp which is 220 pounds at time of testing uh you'd go for the five but also at time of testing there's a i think it's an eight percent offer on the uh on the pro 4 and i to be honest i'd save you money and go for the pro 4 if you weren't going to go for another camera system <sighs> i'm just not that impressed with it it's a good camera it's rugged the camera quality is good although i don't understand why they're dropping frame rates anymore um the night vision is slightly better than the uh, previous one but other than that oh the battery life it, remember what i said at the start that the pro 4 will do six months claimed and the pro 5 will do eight months claimed <laughs> totally rubbish that is uh at best i got about two months out of the pro 4 um, it's usually more like three, four weeks before I need to recharge it. Um, I've been running these side by side. They, I came, they came off charge together and they've been sat next to each other with the exact same settings. I've not got any other settings available. There's a low power mode with the Pro 5, but if you wanted it to be used as a security camera, you want it as good a quality as possible with as many activations as possible. So uh, I've got them at as high quality as possible with the battery uh, set to as um, memory intensive as possible. So it's really hitting it. And um, I'm getting 4% drop in battery for the Pro 4 and 5% battery drop for the Pro 5. So it's actually worse on the battery. And that's after several weeks of using them. So uh, that's a genuine side-by-side -side comparison. Um, which is worth bearing in mind. If you're going to install this camera up on high somewhere, because you don't want it low down, because if it's in reach, someone's going to wander off with it. Um, so you want it up on high. You're going to have to shin up a ladder every, every few weeks to bring it down to plug it into your USB charging point. Bear that in mind. Anything else I can think of? Well, no. I'm just not that impressed enough to recommend spending £220 on a camera, which you then have to spend £3.49 per, per month to uh, review the footage. I don't think it's worthwhile. There's better options out there. Fundamentally, good camera, but the ecosystem around it, it's just not good enough. I'm sorry. I can't recommend it highly enough compared to some of the other cameras that are out there on the market for less money. Sorry. Anyway, thanks for watching the review. Um, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.